What is going on guys, welcome to a new video. So I've got a pretty important topic to discuss with you in this one. Um, I feel like it's gonna help a lot of people out and hopefully motivate some people to keep going as well if you're not necessarily seeing the results that you hoped to see. So I feel like social media then can be quite bad sometimes at creating like a false rep reputation or representation of things and certainly dropshipping is kind of like built this reputation of being an easy way to make money when that just isn't the case. At the end of the day, dropshipping is a business and business is difficult and so it should be as well because if it was easy, then everybody would be doing it and you wouldn't get that same kind of sense sense of achievement or sense of pride if you did it well. So for example then, nobody goes around bragging about the fact that they can drive a car unless you're like 17, 18 years old. And that's because it's not like a unique thing to do. There's millions and millions of people that drive cars every single day. So within a year or two years of driving a car, then that sense of achievement or that sense of pride kind of dulls down and wears off a bit and you soon just become accustomed to being able to drive a car every single day and you don't get that same feeling that you would do like the day after you pass your test. Whereas with a business then or dropshipping, it could be any business pretty much, then there's not a lot of people that actually run businesses and run them profitably either. So when you do do it, then you're going to get so much more of a sense of pride and sense of achievement and even still today like i've been dropshipping nearly three years now and even still when i hear that sales notification go off on my phone that cha-ching noise like i still get a buzz from it and that's because there's not many people that run their own business and run it to the point where that's what they can do for a living what i'm trying to say then is that you want it to be difficult so that when you do achieve it then it'll be worthwhile and it won't just be something that's been done millions and millions of times before so what i've got then is i've got my phone just with some notes on just to run through make sure I don't miss anything out um, and now that I've been drop shipping for nearly three years and I've been doing YouTube as well for nearly one year one single year I've spoken to probably um, a couple of hundred people and I've got to know some people I still speak to some that have been for like nearly a year now and I've got to see where people make their mistakes and where people make their successes as well so I've got kind of like the main or the biggest two reasons why I see people lose money um, and I'm just going to take you through them now so hopefully I can motivate you guys to see where you might be going wrong so you can take a step back or you can do the actual opposite um, and just basically get on the right track. Now, before we actually get into the points, as always, I am giving away a free one-to-one -one call with me on this video. All you've got to do then to enter the raffle is simply like the video and leave a comment down below. Then make sure you tune in tomorrow where the winner will be announced. And if you commented on my previous video then make sure you stay tuned to the end of this one where the winner will be announced so that being said then guys let's get into the points and the number one biggest reason then or the first reason is that people rush so they rush into things way too quickly before they get or grasp a better understanding of how everything works and why the key here is the why that is the most important word um, I see it time and time again people rushing into it that have probably spent hundreds if not thousands on Facebook ads and sometimes not even seen one single sale um, and to me that's because they're trying to they're trying to get to where if they're at point A now, they're trying to get to point B way too quickly. And that probably partly because of that is because of social media. Um, there is a small percentage of people that get crazy, crazy results really fast and really quickly when the true reality is that most people will probably lose money um, at least for the first couple of months before they start seeing any sort of return, um, whether that's making £10 a month or making £1,000 a month. And that's kind of what you need to get your head around is that what you see on social media isn't going to be the reality. So you don't need to feel bad if you lose money in those first few months. But then at the same time, you don't want to be too eager it's a good thing to be eager now don't take this completely the other way and say right i'm not going to do anything for the next six months because that's not what i'm saying what i'm saying is that make sure you grasp a full understanding of the following things that i'm about to go through before you even start spending a penny on facebook ads now the reason it's so important then it, to grasp a full understanding of as much as you can before you get started is because you might watch a video on youtube and as good as the video is, then unless it does give you that full grasp and understanding, then it isn't going to help you in the long run. So Facebook is always changing, so you need to adapt. And unless you have a good understanding of how things work, then essentially you won't be able to make those changes and adjust to make sure that you stay profitable. So 
You might watch one of my videos, one particular strategy and apply it and it works really well and you start making loads of money, but there's gonna come a point where you need to make changes to adjust because um, your cost per action is starting to increase or maybe CPM's going up or whatever it may be. And unless you understand what the numbers mean and essentially what they do, then you're gonna become stuck. So what I'm trying to say is that just make sure you have a better grasp and understanding of everything. Just try and take in as much as possible and make sure you understand what all the different buttons and variations do while you're setting up an ad before you actually go and start spending money. So to kick this point off then, I'm gonna start with what you need to understand when it comes to your store, just because when people I probably get like a dozen requests every single day to look at people's stores and there's just so many people making the same mistakes and it's just because they're not taking the time to fully understand the job of their store and what it needs to do and essentially why it needs to do it in that particular way. So my biggest tip when it comes to having a good store is to find a store that is already proven to, to do good results. You can download a extension for Chrome, it's called Similar Web, and that will tell you how many visits um, a store is getting. And from there you can give you can kind of create like a an estimate of what sort of revenues they're getting each and every month. So that will tell you then if a store is performing well and if it is, then model your store off that store. So look at the layout that they're using. Look at the fonts that they're using, look at the color schemes, where they put their images or just the kind of like key fundamentals that go into it. And if you replicate off a store that's doing really well, then it can be difficult to go wrong. So if, but and another thing as well is that when you do create your store, there's certain things that Shopify will as a default put on your page. So there'll be like a tax, in, tax included or tax and shipping to be calculated at checkout. I don't see that on any other successful Shopify store. So if it's on your store, then it shouldn't be there. So get rid of it. So don't just look at the things that you need to put on your store. Also look at the things that you need to take away. So a couple more quick things then to mention before we move on to Facebook ads um, in relation to your Shopify store that is, you need to understand the why. I'm gonna keep coming back to this word and it's because it's the key word and it's the most important reason. So you have to think, you have to try and get in a customer's mind. You have to think, why would somebody buy from my store? Why am I putting trust badges on my product page? Why am I doing that? Don't just do it because somebody tells you in a video, understand the why. And the why is because you have to make people trust you. We are small business owners. Until we blow up and become like Amazon so everybody knows who we are, nobody's gonna trust me. You have to think, we live in a day and age now where people are very savvy about what websites they're willing to spend their money with because everybody knows that there's scammers out there. So every time they come onto your store, if they've never seen you before, then they're gonna be hesitant to spend money with you because you're essentially not been heard of and you might not have a very big social media following either. So the slightest thing can put people th can put people off. So you have to get into your customer's mind. You have to be thinking, what are they looking for? in order to feel safe to spend money with me. So do I offer PayPal as a payment option? Because that is a huge plus. You should always have PayPal in your stores because everybody sees it as a safe way to check out so they can claim their money back if you are one of those people that are scamming. Why am I putting trust badges on my store? It's so people know that they can spend their money safely. Why am I putting guarantees? It's so people know that if there's a problem at all with their order, they can just get their money back straight away. You're not gonna disappear or you're not gonna not respond to their emails. Why am I putting reviews on my store? It's because people don't trust me and they want to know that other customers have shopped with me and they've received their products and they're happy with it and it is a quality product. So you have to get into the why behind things. And this also comes down to color schemes as well. I see some weird color schemes sometimes in people's stores, which is absolutely fine if it suits the niche. But if you're if you're in quite a neutral niche, so for example, then if you're in a dog niche, the dogs are they're not a very serious subject really. They're quite a playful, happy-go-lucky niche if you think about it. So having like black and dark colors on your store, it, they don't really go unless you're going for a specific kind of market then otherwise you want to keep it quite neutral colors, things that aren't really going to be offensive on people's eyes and Google the psychology of colors. So there's a reason then why most sale signs are in red is because they're big and bold and they grab attention and they create a sense of urgency. Then there's a reason why banks and things like that usually have quite pale colors in their logo. So Lloyd's is green and 
TSB is a light blue and Nationwide is blue and they're really pale colors because they create a sense of safety and well-being within people. There's a psychology behind things. So again, it comes back to that why and understanding why you use certain colors, why you use certain pictures. Pictures, for example, then with people's faces in always capture more... Um, they always capture people's attention more than just a product alone because people naturally want to look at each other. When, you, when you're out and about in town or on the street or just walking past people, you don't walk. Most people will always like lock eyes at some point. It's just a natural, instinctual thing to do. So again, it's understanding the why you put certain things in certain places. So I've just checked and we're already at about 10 minutes for this video. So I'm going to try and speed things up a bit. Um, and moving on to Facebook ads now. I did cover everything when it comes to the store. But Facebook ad wise, before you spend a penny with Facebook ads, like I've spoken to some people before and they've spent hundreds of dollars and they don't even know what the audience insights tool is or they don't know what the pixel is. They just know they put a number in in their Shopify dashboard and they're not really sure what it does. So spend the time to get to know Facebook ads as a platform, not just how to create an ad um, and why you choose purchase, but actually understand all the different features and benefits it can offer you and get to know what the numbers mean as well. So <clears throat> you need to know what, see, you, and you need to know what the relevant ones are as well. And this comes back to the why and understanding essentially what something does. So Facebook, just to kind of give you a couple of things then. So Facebook is a bidding platform, which means the more people that are advertising within your space, the more expensive it's going to be to advertise in that space, the higher your CPM is going to be. So you know then if you've got a really high CPM, then that tells you the audience that you're currently targeting is really expensive and really competitive. So do you have the budget to compete and keep doing what you're doing? Or if you're not profitable, then perhaps look, perhaps niche down into a different audience so you can try and find a cheaper audience or go to a different niche completely and understand essentially what CPA means. It's cost per 1,000 views. So if it's really high, then you know there's a lot of other people competing for those views. So understanding the numbers will help you to understand when to change things up or essentially where things are going wrong. The cost per click as well, it's how much you're paying for somebody to click on your ad. So if you've got one ad set that's getting a £2 cost per click and one that's getting 50 people per click, then you know that that other ad set that's getting the cheaper click, that audience is more interested in your product because more people are clicking on it and you're spending less per click. Now, obviously the be all and end all with Facebook is whether an ad set is profitable or not, but when, if none of your ad sets are profitable, then you need to look at them. You need to look at these numbers like the cost per click, the relevance score as well. If you've got a really high relevance score, then that tells you that your audience is, that your ad is resonating with your audience and essentially you're doing a good job. Now that won't necessarily mean you're gonna make money, but again, all of these numbers you need to take into account as a whole, understand them as a whole, and it will just allow you to make better judgments when it comes to say killing an ad set or keeping and scaling one. And then just to kind of summarize and finish off with Facebook ads, or like the biggest reason then why I see people fail on Facebook is because they don't understand the true essence of what they're trying to do. So Facebook is a social media platform. So it's the place where people go to essentially experience some kind of emotion. And if they do, then they can be social about it. So they can tag a friend, they can share a post. So if you're if you're trying to advertise a fridge on Facebook, then unless the fridge does something magical that is worth sharing, then nobody's going to tag their friend to look at a, a boring fridge or nobody's going to share the post. So you're going to struggle and you need, and that's kind of like also one of the beauties about Facebook as well is that when, if you can get a post to go viral, then essentially you won't have to spend a penny. Just people tagging and sharing will do the job for you. And every time somebody shares, the average Facebook person has, some, I think, somewhere between two and 300 friends. So if they share a post, that's a significant amount of people that are going to see your ad for free, 100% free. So the more you can get people to do that, then the better, the cheaper, essentially, you will pay per click because you're getting a lot of organic reach. So you have to take that into account when you're picking products. If you can pick products that's going to spark that emotion and something that when somebody sees it, they're going to be like, oh, actually, that's pretty cool. Um, So-and-so would like that. So I'm going to tag them. Or in fact, I've got quite a few friends that be interested in this product. So I'm just going to share it on my page. And that's kind of like the thinking of that you have to get behind. So 
a lot of things that I say to people when I'm talking to them in the one-to-one -one calls is that try and think is this a social product? Is it the kind of product then that somebody would tag somebody to show them or share it or whatever it is, or just tell them um, next time they're talking to somebody on a phone. So is it a social product? So just try and think that when you see a product um, and that's gonna make sure that you're on along the right lines. So to kind of summarize then, um, the number one reason then is that I see people in too much of a rush and they're too willing just to throw money at it, hoping to make some money in return. And because they don't really understand things truly, then they don't really know what to do. So they might even actually end up throwing even more money into it and wasting even more money. Now it's good to be in a hurry, but don't be in a rush. If you're in a rush, you're gonna overlook things and the slightest thing that might catch your attention, if you're in a rush, you might think, oh, I'll just forget about it. Just, it's not important right now. Whereas if you were taking your time a bit more, you might stop and think, actually, what is that? And that one point, that one thing in the back of your brain that tells you to stop could be the thing that ends up saving you hundreds of pounds. So be in a hurry, but don't be in a rush. So that being said, then we're moving on to the second biggest reason then why I see people fail. And I'm not gonna spend as much time on this one because it's pretty much the opposite to everything I've just spoken about. And it's that people take too long to actually get started. So I was speaking to somebody the other day on a call and they were saying, I've been looking into dropshipping for four months. I've been watching videos every single day for four months and I just don't know what niche to go into or I don't know what product to pick. And this is just, it's kind of like a double-edged sword. So you need to find the happy medium. But what I'm trying to say then is that don't take too long to get started either because there's a thing called analysis paralysis. And if you think about things too many times, then it's just gonna paralyze you and stop you from actually taking action. And the best knowledge and experience you can gain is through actually running ads. So once you get a good understanding and you've watched like all of my videos, of course, and a lot of other videos as well, then just get started. So what I like to tell people is that have a budget in which you're gonna spend on your business. So say 200 pounds, I'm gonna spend a maximum of 200 pounds. And if I don't see a return by then, I'm just gonna stop. I'm gonna turn all my ads off and then review what I've done and just evaluate what I could have done better, where I've gone wrong. And just do that. Every time you spend 200 pounds, make sure you do that. And then that way it's gonna stop you from losing anything more than that. Now it doesn't have to be 200, obviously, it can be whatever suits your budget, but it's a good starting point. And that's gonna force you to review what you're doing constantly. It's gonna make sure you improve next time round and ultimately it's gonna save you a lot of money as well. So when I got into dropshipping then, I reckon I watched videos for probably about three weeks before actually starting my store, but I was watching probably five hours a day. So I was taking in a lot of information, a lot of content, and at that point, that was when I felt comfortable, um, enough to understand how Facebook ads worked. So I knew what PPE ads were, I knew what kind of CPC I had to achieve for, I knew what CPM was. And because I knew all of those, I've used audience insights. So I'd installed my pixel, I'd learned about pixel maturity. I've been on the Facebook business manager help um, website and I've understood what the best way is to essentially build up data and deliver your um, ad sets more efficiently. So I'd spent all that time and at that point it was comfortable to me to then go and start my business. So. You need to do the same thing. Now, I recommend taking at least a week. It doesn't matter how, if you, even if you're watching like 10 hours a day on YouTube, take at least a week because there's a lot of information to cover and this is a brand new thing. You need to give it time to sink in um, and essentially make sense to you before you start committing money to this because the answer is not just to put more money in and I've seen it time and time again, people spend hundreds if not thousands and not see anything in, in return. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know I like to say quite a lot. Um, the saying that I say is that, and the saying goes, if you're not earning, then make sure you're learning. And what I mean by that then is that if you're spending money, then make sure you're getting something back in return for that. So if you're spending a hundred pound on Facebook ads, then make sure you understand where that hundred pound is being spent and make sure you understand what it means as well once it has been spent. So I always, a good beginner strategy then is to go really broad, really cheaply to begin with because then you can get loads of data from loads of different ad sets and then you've got like a focal point, a comparison point. So to put it into perspective then, if you only run one ad set, then it's difficult to see if it's good results or not because you've got nothing to compare it against. So if I was to say to you, 
uh, completely forgot his name now, Usain Bolt, then the fastest man in the world. But the only reason we know he's fast at running then is because we've seen him run against the best of the best from around the world. So there's a comparison point and it's, you've got to kind of apply the same principle to your Facebook ads. If you haven't got ad sets to compare it against, then how do you know if you're getting good results? So that would be my advice then for anybody starting out. Um, don't rush into it too quickly. Don't just watch a couple of videos on YouTube and then within a few days be spending hundreds of pounds on Facebook ads. Make sure you have a good understanding of those key points I went through. But then at the same time, don't watch a million videos on how to do product research and still not find a product because at that point, the only way you're going to learn if you've found a good product is to simply start advertising, start marketing it, run those 10 different ad sets and see what the engagement's like, see what the cost per click is like, see if you get any sales. Um, and just go from there. So don't be too much of in a rush, but at the same time, don't become paralyzed because you're trying to analyze things too much. There's no way you're going to go into Shopify dropshipping and know the answer to every single question. There's gonna be things that happen that you can't prepare for, and they're the things that you can only learn on the job and learn as you go. So. And ultimately then, I guess just to kind of finish the video off, is just enjoy it. Like I said at the beginning, is that it's going to be difficult, but you want it to be difficult because when you get to the point where you've got something pretty good going, um, then it's a pretty damn good feeling. So that being said, then guys, I'm going to wrap the video up because I've probably been talking for about three hours right now. Um, so if you are still watching the video, then thank you very much. Make sure you leave a comment down below. Let me know if you are still watching. It'll be interesting to see how many people do watch the videos this far way through um, and very much appreciate it as well. It really does mean a lot. Um, the channel has been growing phenomenally recently, so please do keep it up. Um, and don't forget to leave a comment either so you get entered into the raffle for the one-to-one -one call. And actually, that being said then, let's announce the winner from the previous video. Here we are then, guys, on the previous video. 83 likes, so a massive thank you. Uh, like I said just a minute ago, the support has been absolutely awesome. So I'm just copying the URL then, head over to the random um, comment picker, get YouTube comments, 52 unique comments. I think that's the highest we've had so far. Click start. Start the raffle then, let's see who's gonna be the winner um, of today's call. So the winner is Toby Beach. Thank you very much, dropping knowledge as always. Um, I am hoping to do daily videos now as well. I know I've been a bit slack recently, but trust me, there's a lot more to come. So make sure you subscribe. Um, Toby, reach out, um, DM me on Insta, on Facebook, whatever it is. Make sure you get in touch, get my attention, um, and we can get that call arranged. And that being said, then, guys, that's it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.